Welcome to the Caregiven Podcast. I'm Inga. And I'm Julie. And long story short, we have Caregiven. We are two mom entrepreneurs who have built an in-home care business from the ground up, guided every step of the way by God's care and fueled by agape love. Almost 14 years later, we felt called to create this podcast as a resource for families with caregiving needs. Whether you care for a family member or are looking for advice on professional caregiving, we want this to be a platform to support you. Each week, we will come to you with encouraging stories of families who have found the right balance for their loved ones, tips for how to care for them and you, and much more. We hope you continue to join us each week as we share in this exciting new journey together. Hello, Sunshines, and hello, Julie. How are you today? I am good, Inga. How are you? I'm great. Good. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah. So, Julie, do you know why the Scarecrow won an award? Why? Well, quite simply because he was outstanding in his field. <laughs> why else? <laughs> <laughs> okay, not funny. Uh, so, uh, we're, we're getting into fall. Yeah. What do you like about fall? Oh, you know, I try to keep a positive a- attitude on the fall. It does uh, you get to bring out the sweatshirts yep. a little bit more and all of that. But that also just means around the corner is winter. So, that cr- <laughs> makes me cranky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I, I try to just enjoy all of the um, autumn long days and, and uh, just then prepare myself emotionally and mentally for... It's because you have a farm, right? Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. So you is. Make, take the next several, or a couple months, several weeks to just prepare knowing that... Pretty soon I'm going to get my butt kicked. Soon. It's chores in the dark in the morning, chores in the dark at night, which freezing, is almost there anyway. Freezing cold. Oh, yeah. You don't like the cold. I don't. Yeah. No. I love um, the autumn colors, mm. and especially being in Montana because we have very distinct season changes, true, right? True, true. But it's weird. I was actually talking about it. Kevin and I took a drive um, up through, like, Pole Bridge area. If you're from Montana, you probably know where that is. If you're not, anyway, it's beautiful, and um, just, like, really valuing the landscape and the beauty of it and Mm. the colors changing. And I don't like those colors like for anything else, (laughs) right? I don't want to wear them. I don't want (laughs) to. The browns and the yellowishes and so yeah, just issues. But but in fall, I just think they're just gorgeous. Mm Mm-hmm. And sweatshirts, yes. Mm-hmm. I do enjoy the sweatshirt. Right. My The perfect temperature for me is when you're comfortable in a sweatshirt. Yep. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. That anyway. Makes sense. Good. Huh. Cool. Well, listeners, if you were with us last week, um, we talked about blood pressure. And I think at some point we were talking about the shape of the heart. Yep. And that it is the human heart organ is very different from the, the cute little heart that we all draw. So um, Alyssa actually looked this up. And I'm going to read to you and tell you the theory that we landed on, because I think they're actually not just one, but this is the one we liked. So we're going to go with it. Of, of why we came up with the heart that we draw. Yep. Not the heart that's in our heart. Yep. yep. The heart in our chest. Yeah. So basically it says the iconic symbol of love looks nothing like the human organ. Why? Blame Aristotle or maybe a plant. <laughs> the mystery of how the heart icon <laughs> achieved its shape likely began in the 13th or 14th century, scholars say. Aristotle, the ancient Greek philosopher and scientist, wrongly believed that the human heart had three cavities. In fact, um, the heart has four chambers that pump oxygen-rich blood in and out, right? So it has four, not three, but apparently Aristotle thought it was three. So then we have Pierre Vinkin, who authored The Shape of the Heart. He wrote that anatomists illustrating Aristotle's mistaken notion of what a human heart looked like might have contributed to the shape. By the time the anatomical error was corrected in the 16th century, the icon was so popular that the image stuck. So another possible theory does include the heart shape mirroring the seed pods of an ancient type of (laughs) silphium plant. Uh, Don't check me if you want to. I'm not sure. (laughs) Silphium plant that acted um, as an early form of birth control in the Greek colony Serene. Oh. Yeah. And it's shaped like a heart. Must be. Hmm. Yeah. Well, now you know. Now you know. At least one theory. There you go. I love it. There we go. Okay. So the first of the day Mm -hmm. or the week or the show. Um, This is Psalm 16, chapter or chapter 16, verse 11. And this says, you make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Yes. I picked that verse today just because we're going to be talking about 
um, activities of things to do and keep busy in the fall, mm-hmm. both indoors and outdoors. And I was just like, well, you know what? We need to find pleasure in everything we do. Mm-hmm. And so that is what this verse reminded me of. I love that. Mm -hmm. And I think that it does as we go into fall and then into winter and it gets a little doomier and gloomier because we were even saying today that it's raining out. So that kind of changes the whole feel of everything. So it is important to um, have things to do, have things to look forward to and not get really sucked into the uh, cloudier weather. Thus the mindset. Thus the mindset. Very, very true. Yes. No cloudy mindsets. Mm -mm. Mm-hmm. Well, if you have a verse that you'd like to send to us, please send those to the caregiven podcast at gmail.com. We love it. Julie loves to have uh, verses to pick from, yes. and she always tries to make them relate to the topic that we're working on of the day. Right. Yeah. Yes. Cool. Did you have a, an uplifting story? Oh, I do. I love this <laughs> one. It's a short story about a teacher. A new pupil who had already been kicked out of three schools was brought to the, uh, to the school. One teacher came to class, looked at the new pupil, and thought, where only such people come from? (laughs) The second teacher came, saw a new pupil, and said with anger, there is no lack of you here. The third teacher came to class. Do do we have a new pupil, he rejoiced. He went to the new pupil, shook his hand, looked him into the eyes, and smiled and said, good morning, I was waiting for you. I love that. Yes. And I bet they get different results. Oh, boy. (laughs) Yes. Well, a couple episodes ago, I think I may have recited Shel Silverstein's poem about um, the selfish child. So that was the nighttime one. But I have another daily prayer that I would like to share today. Okay. It goes like this, and it's actually written by John T. Baker. It says this, Dear Lord, I'm proud to say so far today, I've gotten along all right. I have not gossiped, whined, or bragged, or had a single fight. I haven't lost my temper once or criticized my mate. I have not lied. I have not cried or loudly cursed my fate. So far today, I've not one time been grumpy or morose. I've not been spiteful, cold or vain, self-centered or verbose. (laughs) But Lord, I'm going to need your help throughout the hours ahead. So give me strength, dear Lord, for now I'm getting out of bed. (laughs) (laughs) Every single morning. (laughs) (laughs) Everyone. Oh, that's a good one. I love that. Yeah. Well, what are we talking about today, Jules? Activities for seniors that boost well-being during the fall. Mm. Yeah. Or anytime you're getting more and more stuck inside or, you know, what are the things to look forward to? Right on. During that time, during that season. Yeah. So they call it the great indoors, huh? Mm Mm-hmm. So let's talk about that. So basically, um, it's funny because a lot of times I've been seeing things about digital games for um, seniors or elderly people to work on. Mm -hmm. And I think about how much we all complain about our kids when they're on their phones. Right. Right. But we're saying, oh, if you need something to do, do a digital game. But I also then think about Grandma Fisher and she loves her crossword puzzles and things like that. So however you want to work that in, just having some type of a game. I know my mom plays solitaire sometimes and different things like that. That's a, an activity that you can do that doesn't require any money and you can do it from the comfort of your own home. Does your mo- uh, grandma do it? Um, does she have the, bi- the book that she writes in newspaper? It? The newspaper? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Because I didn't see her having a smartphone. No. No, she does not have a smartphone. She does not have internet at her house and she won't ever. Right. So yeah, she does no. it old school. Right. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. Yep. Yeah, it's sometimes fun to get the newspaper and try to do all of those different little yeah. activities they have randomly everywhere. I find out how unintelligent I am. <laughs> <laughs> I try to do the crossword puzzle. Oh, Lord, I would <laughs> never do well on Jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. <laughs> yeah, so basically when the weather is not cooperating, uh, they say to host fall activities for seniors indoors. Um, that is actually uh, where seniors can have the greatest impact on their well-being because de- uh, depression is a risk factor for any adult, but seniors are especially susceptible um, when the days start to get shorter mm-hmm. and the darkness is longer and it's cold and it just, you know, if you're fighting any kind of chronic pain or that, it you just feel it in your joints mm-hmm. you know, and you're achy and, you know, so let's find some joy. Yep. What things can you do? Right. So, yeah. Um, Another thing that they talk about is creating a um, a close knit group of seniors. Okay, knitting together. Mm. Oh, literally knit. 
knit. Not yes. just close knit friends getting <laughs> together. Literally knitting. Yeah. It boosts happiness. Oh. Grandma makes the best socks. Yeah. Cute. Yeah, my um I know at church there's a whole group of ladies that uh get together and do quilting. Mm-hmm. And that's probably the same thing. But um just last week Mike was going through his jeans. Yes. And um he is not like these these new fashions where you buy the jeans that have all of the holes already oh, in yes. them. <laughs> and um I said, geez, we could probably sell those jeans. For a lot of money yeah. <laughs> because they have the holes in them naturally. But as we were um, looking them over, when we first got married from his grandma, Irene, she had made, um, she was very much a quilter and she had made a denim yep. um, uh, quilt. And I was like, she would take every bit of this yep. material and put it to use. Absolutely. And um, I am not that crafty person. And I mean, I did try to do a latch hook rug one time. I think it took three years to get her done, <laughs> but I did get it done. Um, but um, three years later, but um, when you have somebody and they see a scrap piece of uh, material, they just immediately, their mind starts going crazy yeah. about, oh, where can I put this? What can I do with it? Yeah. And I'm just like, we can't just throw these away. Right. They're probably worth a lot of stinking I, money. To somebody for yeah. something, for sure. <laughs> right. I always think that crafts are a good idea. And then I just, I'm not very artistic and so I then get frustrated and never have as much fun as I think I'm going to. Oh, what but is it? The Pinterest. Yeah. You see all of the things that you can make and it looks really easy and then you try it. You try and it just becomes one of the <laughs> they have shows made where mm-hmm. it, it's one of them is literally called Nailed It. Yes. Because they have the project there. And I think in this case they're cooking um, and making decorative cakes and such. But anyway, <laughs> I I remember you sending me some nailed it pictures of different things you tried. I don't know. That's awesome. Don't Sammy know. does the um, cross stitching uh-huh. as well, so those are fun. Just I don't know any something that you can just kind of sit and 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 work on, you know, yeah. to take your mind. Yeah. Yep. Some people that's really good. Other people have a, a struggle with that with arthritis and things. Yes, so this is true. While you're looking for those activities, think about th- what your person is capable of doing because we don't want to just add more frustration. Oh sure. Yeah. <laughs> Like golfing for me. Oh boy! I don't for think everybody that I else, want to try that. My mom was going to try golfing with her friend, and um, and I was like, Ma, I don't know. I'm not sure if that's the right thing for you because, you know, when you miss the ball, it's a little frustrating, and I just don't want you to implode on the golf course. Anyway, okay. So, have you heard of um the word huga? No. Yeah. So ev- evidently this is a Danish word and it means cozy mm-hmm. and it's a very a lifestyle trend type thing in America. But they say to it involves like friends coming together by firelight or candlelight to enjoy the warmth of camaraderie just over simple pleasurable activities, whether that's games, reading, you know, just some simple pastime, but just in that firelight or that candlelight, it's warm and cozy, especially during fall and so winter. So the, the aviance. Is um, the key yeah. of this yep. is you're not just having the regular light on. Yep. You've got candles or lower light mm-hmm. is what, and say it again. Um, huga. 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 That's a fun thing to say. It is. Huga. 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 <laughs> cool. Didn't never heard of it. I might try it by myself. Yeah. I was going to say. <laughs> In the tub. <laughs> no. I With bubbles. <laughs> does that still count or does it have to be like a... <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, probably with a group of people, so probably <laughs> not in the tub. Nix the tub, but <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. If you are who going with friends, <laughs> it's recommended that you wear clothes. Okay, <laughs> that's just a tip. In case anyone is wondering. Oh lordy, oh, yeah, yes. Saturday night live trivia. Hmm. Oh, that would be fun. I would get the eighties trivia pretty good. 80s. <laughs> Don't <laughs> say it like that. <laughs> I actually had downloaded an 80s trivia, and I was doing pretty darn good. Really? It makes me mad when I don't get 100%. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I understand. But that was the that was when you wanted to be born was and raised was in the 80s. Is that so? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. I don't remember much of the 80s. Uh, quite. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, gosh. But yeah, um, if it's not going to be trivia, then find another fun game. I know people get together. Uh, what are they? Bunk- bunkles? Bon- bon- bonkers? No, Bunko. Bunko. Bunko, Scrabble. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to think of other games that people get together. You played a lot of games when you got together with Sonny and Rick. <laughs> Have you ever played Risk? Risk. And what's that humanity game? Oh, yeah. That one's, I can't recommend it. <laughs> so you have to it's be very, very naughty. Very careful with it. Cards Against Humanity. Yeah, it's, yeah, yes. yes. I've never played it. So. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so choose your audience well. Yes. Depending on the game. Yeah. Oh, fun. Uh, take t- chai, tai chi. Tai chi. Or you could have chai tea. <laughs> My girls like chai tea. <laughs> <laughs> Of mine, uh, but basically that is a an activity where it's actually helping you with your balance. Mm-hmm. So that get a group together and don't that. fall over. Have you ever practiced just trying to like stand on one foot? Just, I have. And how do you do? Pretty darn good, actually. Mike came in the other day because something was on TV, and he goes, "You know, if you can't stand on one foot for ten seconds, you're going to die in the next three years." I'm a goner. <laughs> he goes, "Bet you can't do it." So I just said, oh, yeah. So I stood up and I did both. I did one leg and then I did the other and just nailed it. Nice. (laughs) Like the Pinterest nailed it? No, no. Like the recreation of nailed it. I actually nailed nailed it. it. Yeah. Okay. Solid win for me. (laughs) Good. Good job. Yes, thank you. I don't know. I should practice that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So some of the outdoor things, and this is kind of fun. They say like tailgate Saturdays. So think about how much... um, enjoyment people get out of tailgating at football games right. or different sports activities but I mean nobody's saying you can't do that in your own yard right <laughs> that would be super fun yeah that's cool it's kind of a picnic snacks except not on the ground yeah right? the next one actually it's funny because um it just seems like risque but it isn't the ultimate leaf peeping experience. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. Basically, <laughs> leaf peeping is one of the most beloved fall activities for seniors, and it gives seniors a truly eye-opening look at the fall foilage, foilage, foliage <laughs> with a walk, or sometimes different areas have like bus led tours or things like that. Oh, but fun. yeah, basically go look around because it's gorgeous out there. Yeah. We have a, by our chicken coop, we have a tree that just becomes this fiery red. That's my favorite. Yeah. I don't know what it's called, but you don't really notice the tree all year until all of a sudden you look out and you go, holy cow, that's beautiful. That's uh, one of our neighbors. Same thing. They've got, they have all of this beautiful landscaping, but I never notice it until fall. Mm. And then when I drive up, it's just like orange and bright, bright red and so gorgeous. Mm, yeah. And then up where Mike works, it's a lot of tamaracks. Oh yeah. And then, so they turn a really gorgeous color. Yeah. Cool. Huh. So leaf peeping is not risque. It's, it's a something we can recommend yes. for all audiences. <laughs> for <laughs> all what ages. about planting? Oh, see now that's interesting to me because I would assume that most planting was of course done in the spring. Right. But they're saying that there's some that do better Right. right, the perennials. Yeah. Yep, so those flower bulbs um, that are going to keep coming back year after year. And something I was thinking about, um, because, you know, I, I think about some of the people in my life where planting, getting down on the ground isn't going to work for them. But mm-hmm. when, like with my mom and grandma, when the garden, traditional garden, was no longer an option, um, my mom had, like, raised garden beds oh, nice. made. And so those it's look easier. really cool too. Yeah, they, they do. Um, yeah, I've got neighbors that um, they actually, they must be considered raised, but mm-hmm. they put them into the galvanized tubs that we oh, usually yes, use yes. for watering our cows. Yep. Um, but they had all different sizes and they just made it look so nice. Really, really pretty. There's yeah. not the, the weeds or there's not nothing. Yeah. And it's nice when it's contained. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So this one is for Kevin Lake. Welcome in the trick or treaters. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. Halloween is just not his any of our real. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. He's never had a bad experience. <laughs> Maybe because for me personally, and probably Kevin too, a lot of our lives we really grew up more rural, so yeah. we didn't have really trick or treaters. Do you have any where you live now? Um, 
hopefully most years the neighbor kids that we share the driveway with will come over yeah. at some point at the end of their trick or treating they'll swing by so we can see their outfit or their costumes oh cute but other than that no yeah i've never ever lived in a spot where i had to buy trick or treat stuff and so yeah. just I, I always did <laughs> two reasons just in case somebody <laughs> stopped by and also um then if nobody showed up there was candy that had to be eaten well yes you couldn't waste it no yeah no not at all hmm. yeah hmm, cute um scary movies they say Ugh, uh start a scary it. movie series i disagree yeah i'm with you yeah i can't do anything harder than uh, scooby-doo yeah i just which is weird to me though i i don't like the um like jump scare movies or really psychologically like that mess with you I don't like those but I listen to a ton of true crime doesn't make any sense you are weird I listen to it though so it's basically my mind is able to put whatever picture that I want to see with it versus on the screen mm. you know what I'm saying I've been mm -hmm. doing trying to analyze that and figure out mm. why am I okay listening to true crime but I don't want to watch huh anything scary yeah no I don't like <laughs> any of that stuff mm. Yeah. Have a costume contest. Cute. I think some of these things are maybe talking about if people are in facilities or, you know, apartment complexes mm -hmm. or things like that where they're, where you're not out in the country like we are. Right. Can you imagine me and Kevin in a costume contest? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but that would be cute to get in a group of people together. These are just ideas that can yeah. pull people together. Yeah. If you're going to have a, a pot, a neighborhood potluck or yeah. you're going to have any of that, just add a little bit of more festivities to it yep yeah. absolutely and then of course there's always the pumpkin um either carving or painting mm -hmm. or pumpkin patching i do like that so what's that the pumpkin patch oh yeah. going to the pumpkin going to patch. the pumpkin patch oh i thought you were patching a pumpkin <laughs> and i was thinking that was the next new thing <laughs> No, I'm just pumpkin patching. Okay. <laughs> we have a great pumpkin patch here in our area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really good. Right on. And as an adult, I enjoy going there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's hard to pick one. Oh, I don't actually pick a pumpkin. I just do the other things. Oh. Yeah. Mm, I, like I, I don't go to the pumpkin patch for the pumpkins. That would be silly. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. What was I thinking? I know. <laughs> That's just wild. I don't know where you come up with this stuff. Oh, right. Yeah. Anyway, no, I go to the pumpkin patch because you get to go on a tractor ride and you get to um, go through a corn maze. And oh, you cute. Get, yeah. Gotcha. Like that. You Got get to pet. You. Like they have a little petting zoo. And mm. yeah, that's why I go. So this, this stuff we were just talking about is more of your October-ish mm -hmm. type stuff. Could be, yeah. Yeah. Now we're moving into more of the November-ish mm -hmm. things. Um, cause, um, we're talking about maybe Thanksgiving, closer to Thanksgiving things that you can do. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, th tell us about a gratitude wall. Um, so basically it's really just whatever you want it to be, whether you mm -hmm. just take a big piece of paper or you've got a cork board or whatever. And essentially you're just writing down things that you are grateful for mm -hmm. and putting them on this wall. Oh, cute. And just like yesterday, you know, here in the office, it's like, Hey, quick go around the room. What are you grateful for? Yeah. Right? It's crazy how much better you feel when you choose gratitude over complaining or being grumpy or um, talking yeah. about the things that you don't like. So I'm working really hard on trying to talk about the things that I do like. So tell us, tell everybody, because you told me yesterday about that study. Yeah. So actually, um, I've just recently been listening more and learning more from Levi Lesko, who is the Fresh Life pastor. And he had a reel out on Instagram and it was talking about a study. I, I think it was like UC Davis, but I, I'm not exactly positive on that. But anyway, basically where there were two groups of people and one group was tasked with like daily writing down the things that they were grateful for. And then the other was tasked with writing down the things that they were grumpy about or, you know, didn't like. And essentially at the end of the three weeks or whatever that this went on, the grateful group was just so much better, so much happier, mm. which I mean, it makes sense if you think about it and it doesn't take forever to change your mindset. Right. Right. But you just have to start. Yeah. Oh, and it's something you have to work on within yourself mm -hmm. for sure. Cause it's easy to be cranky yeah. and in the, in the dumps all the time. Yeah. But 
but being grateful is an awesome thing. Yeah. I love that. Um, I just was looking on Facebook earlier today, and my aunt that's in Spokane has uh, grandma's living with her right now, mm -hmm. and um, she made some kind of a comment about how well um, 94 year old Patsy was doing. And um, that she's just keeping her so busy with activities. And one of the activities that they had just done just this last couple of days was um, writing thank yous yeah. for this group that uh, Ray is really involved in. And she just plopped grandma down with a pen and had her writing thank yous and Aww. licking stamps and envelopes and, you know, sticking everything in getting them ready to get delivered. And then they went out and did the deliveries. That's awesome. And so that's a, you know, that's a lot. That's a lot of work. That is a lot of work, but it's also purpose, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, and exactly. so I think that as people age, um, some, and they have less things that they have to be responsible for, you can lose a sense of purpose. So right. I, I love that. Yeah. I, I just, I think that in general, the, the key to a lot of happiness is just maintaining engagement. Yeah. Oh, um, and right. that we, as friends and family need to make sure that we are, we too are engaging with our seniors, you know, not just expecting them to come to us all the time. So right, right. Um, another fun thing that they talk about in November is like Thanksgiving or Friendsgiving. Um, I love that. So I don't, Thanksgiving is like my jam. I just love it. <laughs> I, we here at the office, we do our Thanksgiving feast where we invite all of our caregivers and our clients to come in and we s we're able to serve them a meal um, because I feel like, I don't know, I just I, I just like those acts of service. But um, And then at my house, all the family comes over to my house for Thanksgiving. It's the one that I get to make food for. And then we have friends that will go and go to actual Friendsgiving. So fun. Yeah. Very good. And I know that um, like the people that if ever there was somebody that was that I came across that didn't have somewhere to go mm -hmm. it would be like come with me yeah. come with me come be a part of this you yeah know what I mean? well the one that we do is always on Wednesday before actual Thanksgiving yep. here in the office yep. and it it turns out that that's what the only Thanksgiving they're going to get yeah. was what we were offering yeah. um so what a special treat yeah yeah, so that was that puts an extra nice little yeah. kiss on top of it for sure. Yeah, so good, so good. I love it. All right, other fall activities: bake a pie. Ooh, please do. I need to go learn from my grandma Fisher. She's the best pie baker in the world. Mm. And apparently, when Uncle Andy comes to visit, which he's been coming more frequently, um, he gets special pie baked oh. for him. What kind? Um, I don't know. Whatever he orders up. <laughs> Huckleberry is it's a big just one extra in. special because it was made with love by Grandma Fisher. Oh, cute! Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. Huckleberry is always the the main requested one. But boy, oh boy, I saw a gallon of Huckleberries the other day. Spendy! Oh boy! Holy cow! I used to know when they were like twenty five, thirty dollars a gallon. These were $110 a gallon. Oh, wow. <laughs> Why do you think that is? Uh, was there like a shortage of huckleberries this I, year? I don't or think there was. I it's almost just like wonder everything. it was the gas and the effort and everything. Yeah, I don't every know. It, it was wild. I was like, ooh, I really wanted some huckleberries, but probably not that bad. Or go pick my own. I don't know. So basically, you can visit a haunted house in the fall? Yep. Not me. No, mm. thanks. Right? <laughs> no, no. Um, apple picking, pumpkin picking, like we said. Yep. Going for a hike. Just on those beautiful days when it is um, not going to be quite so crisp out, get outside mm -hmm. for at least a little bit for sure. Corn mazes, hay rides. You can do all of that at the pumpkin patch here. Mm. You don't even have to go pick a pumpkin. <laughs> Seasonal treats. That's kind of fun. Oh, yeah. getting into that, that part of the year where it is so fun to do that. Lefsa. Lefsa. Yep. When do they usually do that? Um, I think we should be doing it right now, actually. Oh? Yeah. Is it a harvest thing or a what? It's just a potato. Like, it's like a potato tortilla almost. Oh. I don't know. Have you, you've had Lefsa? I don't know. We, we have done it a couple times at my, my grandma's house. We'll have a little Lefsa making party. It's a good fall activity. Mm -hmm. I need to get that scheduled. Yeah, and that's what I was wondering. Is that more because of it was like harvest time or is there a specific time that you make lefsa or you just want to feel like it? I don't. You ask so many questions that I don't know. I just know that lefsa is really good <laughs> and I need to make some. So what, it's a tortilla with from potatoes? It's basically like. Um, and then you eat it like that or do you? 
Well, you can either have it sweet or savory. You can put like butter on it or butter mm. and um, sugar or whatever. Oh, I don't know. Huh. I should try this lefse. You should try it. We'll make you some. <laughs> I'll bring you. <laughs> well, you're not going to invite me. To <laughs> you want to come and make some lefse with us? I okay. don't. I don't. Do <laughs> okay. So that's fair. Um, what about yeah. farmer's markets? Oh, I don't That's know. Are there farmers markets that still go in the fall around here? I'm not sure how late they go, but they have had some that were indoors yeah. for a while. Mm. And then once again, after it starts getting icky, I know from Thanksgiving to Christmas, a lot of the places like Majestic Valley Arena and the oh. fairgrounds have those indoor yep. uh, different well, like craft fairs craft or fairs. Trade, yeah. trade show type things. Yeah. 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 So those are just some ideas. If you. Um, are looking for things to do in the fall? Wear your mittens. Yes. And actually, in Mother's case, right, she needs to have her hot little... Oh, yes, her um, hand warmers. Hand warmers. That's all she asks for, for gifts. Mm -hmm. Birthdays, Christmas, Valentine's Day, it doesn't matter. She just wants hand warmers. She's very easy. Yeah. She's very easy. Yeah. So I'll get her those things for her, you know, that sh she asks for, but then supplement with other things <laughs> throughout fun. the year. <laughs> yes. So like I got her some shoes, some Hey Dude shoes. Oh, right. Now Did she can she... try her toe warmers in the Hey Dude shoes. Does she like them? She loves them. Yeah. And grandma got some too. Hot red. Hot red. Mm -hmm. They're new house mm -hmm. shoes. Cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. So we um, have a grand... Grandma saying, um, and well, actually, it's a grandpa saying today. Is Terry's grandpa used to say, "You're the bee's knees," <laughs> and um, all Terry could figure was that if that was being said, then I must be doing something right. Nice. <laughs> I hear that actually. Um, my Bailey says that a lot. Oh, really? Yeah, the cute. bee's knees. Oh, that's cute. Huh. Awesome. Well, if you haven't yet done so, please go and subscribe. You can do that on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, YouTube. Leave us your reviews. Join our Apaga Karen Share and send in your verses, your grandma sayings, um, any good news stories. You can email those to the Caregiving Podcast at gmail.com. Please do it. Yeah. Yep. Peace out, Girl Scouts. We love them. Have a super day.